12 minutes zero, basically. Yeah, that's it. We're closing up. There shop. we go, guys. Show's <laughs> over. Time to go home. Pack it up. <laughs> I'll go into zero. All right. There we go. No. So obviously for me being always the permeable, right? Um, I would say, honestly, I, I actually do believe we're going to get a bit of a bounce up after the 15th. Um, that's tax day. Um, there is people that extend out their taxes and stuff like that and get extensions up to like September, I think, in terms of businesses and stuff. But roughly around that time, um, the government is just the, the government is just approved basically to increase the, the debt limit <laughs> on their spending <laughs> and stuff. So Congress has gotten a pay raise. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know we did this on MLD show and stuff, but I think it was a what one point four trillion dollar um, um, budget basically was like approved. Mm essentially in terms of increasing the, the limit. So when you, you know, once we get past April 15th, that, that spending ends up happening basically. So we're going to start spending that money right there. Um, the fed is increasing the rates, but at the same time, they're still printing money on the back end. So at mm -hmm. some point, if they keep increasing rates, what will end up happening is you'll end up having this point where the, they have to print additional money on top of that. So we actually do, I actually do think in, in, we have a really big catalyst to actually start shifting us back up in price and stuff. And, uh, and I don't, I don't know if, if you had some thoughts on that anymore or not, but, but, you know, I'm pretty, I am pretty bullish. I think we're going to have a really good like second quarter. I do think we might have a little bit of a weaker third quarter and a strong fourth quarter person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm just generally bullish long-term and ignorant short-term. <laughs> I love it. So can you explain that? As in, I think as, as much as anything, you can't predict anything short term reliably. You can like to an extent, if it's like a specific project that you're really into and you just know that this, this, this is about to happen. Mm. But even then, like that's not 99% chance, like shit, shit happens. Um, you know, like Russia and Ukraine happens all of a sudden and mm. it maybe it doesn't go the way you thought. So but long term the the thesis you know that just the found that like, everything that crypto is i'm just like immensely bullish for where it's going and so like um because you were mentioning before the stream like eth was something that like you obviously uh are highly into uh, as well as a bunch of other things but um with ethereum like at what point are you just like price is too fucking good like i just want to like sell my house sell the camera sell everything let's just buy as much ETH as we can like what's that price for you to be fair it's kind of at that price now uh considering where we are potentially going for the rest of this year we're about to have a ton of well a supply shock come up sometime this year like but are the effects of that going to be experienced on the graph this year mm -hmm. or like early next year that i can't predict but I, I just say it's always a good time to DCA in, especially sub 10K. Just anywhere under 10K, you're great. And you're probably, it turns out long term, you're, you're, you're great sub 25K. Who knows? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it was the same for Bitcoin, right? Like back in 2019, I think Bitcoin, right? Like when we started this show, um, Bitcoin was around $4,000. Um, and so like, yeah, there's like lots of opportunity there for, I mean, when Bitcoin was under 20K, you could have bought as much as you wanted. Ethereum as well, like under $100, you could have bought as much as you wanted. Here, Ethereum under 10K, like what price do you think it'll get to long term? Like maybe like in 2025, 2030, something like that. Ethereum, um, potentially above 100K, um, but I can't say that like with certainty. But I can say that it should be above like 20k by that time. This is just me being like calmly conservative, and that's obviously like nearly a 10x from where it is now. I think it can do more than that because at the moment, obviously, like everyone is mining, and then as miners earn Ethereum, they have to sell that Ethereum in order to pay their electricity bill to keep mining Ethereum. So they're like cutting, they've got some kind of profit margin there. Whereas when proof of stake comes out, um, all of that Ethereum that's getting sold, like it just no longer happens because you, mm. you don't have to pay a cost to earn from staking. It just happens passively. You don't have to pay for the electricity that it costs to do that. So then suddenly there's no, re there's no like that, constant sell pressure is no longer coming through and a bunch of people are locking up 
Ethereum and like the loads of Ethereum is just locked up in liquidity pools and stuff all over the place, and it gets you know um, a deflationary. So yeah, definitely. And I think I mean we talked about ETH here a little bit last week, and long, long term I do agree. Like it basically is going to follow the same track as Bitcoin um, right. for the most part in terms of not necessarily just in terms of like price and where it's at in the cycle, but just in terms of like growth potential. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we're expecting 100K Bitcoin here. Um, I'm also expecting 100K ETH. And so the reason why I asked you that question in terms of like where you think it can go and then like what's the the price like where you, you know, be like, hey, I'll happily just, you know, sell everything. The reason why I'm asking those questions is because like in Q2, I do think we're coming uh, up to like a cross, uh, like a fork of the road, essentially. Um, meaning if we dump at any part in Q2 below 30K, I would say it's going to be not necessarily like a flash in terms of like a day or two down, but I would say it's good. We're going to go down like into that 20, like high 20 K range on Bitcoin, which would be, you know, sub $2,000 ETH, maybe, you know, $1,500 ETH, something like that. Um, if we do get a bearish move at the beginning of the quarter uh, or the early part of the quarter uh, or the late part of this quarter, I think that would be like a very quick move below 30 K for Bitcoin. So below 2000 K for Bitcoin or sorry for Ethereum. And then uh, a very, not like super speedy recovery, but like maybe about a month of just like price kind of like being like, okay, I'm kind of getting used to this. And then boom, like continued bull market versus um, I think if we do go up closer to that 50 to 60K range for Bitcoin and maybe like 3,000, 500, 4,000 for Ethereum, if we get into those ranges again, I think you're going to continue to get like the short term people taking profits. And so then it'll take a little bit longer for us to basically get extremely bullish again. So either way, whatever happens in Q2, in my opinion, as long as you're prepared for both scenarios is going to be good, right? Because if you get like a discount on everything, right? And we know we're still in a bull market, we're in a consolidating phase of a bull market. Um, then, I mean, those discounts become like, okay, what did well? And I'm just going to like, you know, yeah. pick all of those ones. And then obviously some new ones along with it, because there's always, whenever you kind of get a clearing of the forest, you get like a new, you know, group of, of coins coming out. So, um, you know, I, I do encourage people to make sure that they have some dry powder um, throughout Q2 for the, for that reason. Yeah. So we, we we're going to be loading up on Shiba. We're going to be loading up on Doge. <laughs> hey, man, Shiba made it, right? Like, hey. <laughs> yeah, Shiba made it. <laughs> but Doge never came back. <laughs> Even with, I think Elon shielded it the other day for the first time in a minute. Yeah, and nothing happened, right? Yeah. I mean, he kind of, yeah, I don't know. He, I, I he weren't his welcome a little bit too much in, in crypto, man. Honestly, I think he, uh, oh, yeah. he's like, on that, I haven't sold any of my Bitcoin or none of my stuff, but you sure sounding like you were dumping your stuff. You know, when, when we, you yeah. know, when we really needed him, you know, he he was fighting in there for yeah. a minute, you know, like. Yeah, they'll, they'll come back when it's popping again. Yeah. That's it. I was literally thinking about buying a Tesla. Then I was like, nah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm, what should I do with these gains? Tesla? Nope. <laughs> Next. But uh, what what about you, Venomore? What's your long term goal with ETH? Like, what do you what do you see crypto as like the vehicle for for you? Well, ultimately, just not having all of my money turned to dust by the government and inflation, as well as you know achieving <laughs> financial freedom. 